Good morning, everybody. I hope this video finds you well. Today I want to talk a little bit about extraterrestrial stuff, or at least what I always forever considered to be extraterrestrial. It's actually something completely different. How can you have a transdimensional extraterrestrial? I don't know. I guess it's our inherent biases, huh? Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, these creatures or these things or these spirits or these angels known as mantids. I got to tell you guys, um, I don't quite understand why I am in my role or... I mean, I understand the functional details about it. I understand how I came to be and all that stuff, everything I related, but but really, guys, I mean, I, 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 I really don't understand why me. Why do I have this... this, 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 this role or this drive or anything associated with this kind of stuff? So I got this calm going on. And you guys who know about my role in Majestic know about the calm. And uh, since uh, I won't say I awakened it, it's always been there. But from my point of view, it was it just kind of lay dormant. It wasn't active when um, it was active when um, I was busy with uh, ELF calm, but um, upon retirement, you know, when that dropped off, I thought everything else dropped off. And uh, then um, I started getting this stuff from the commander. Stuff from the commander, like some crazy ass person. Hearing voices in the heads, kind of shit. Uh, it's not really like that, but. Um, so I'm getting these urges, these, uh, these pushes, these nudges, these directions. And, uh, Manted is one of them. Subject to Manted is one of them. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I want you to imagine that you're an Isby, okay? And an Isby is like everything. You've got, it's everything about you. It's everything about you and your consciousness. It's you, okay? And uh, it's not, it, it's, it's generated thoughts. You generate a thought, congratulations. That's a new building block that goes into your Isby everything and uh, this is be who you are this everything this ev everything is pretty expansive and it's transdimensional and a small part of it is known as soul and you can take parts you can gather parts up par gather this quanta up and say this is soul and put it in different places. Uh, we use the container, I use the container of a soul for illustrative purposes. That's, that's how I view all this stuff. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, it's in this container. We use these containers and we take our part of ourselves and put them in these other containers we call universes. So we exit this everything 
and we put a small part of us or a part of us as a as a group and inject it into a universe there are is some debate whether this is everything is injected in a singular unit universe or not but generally we can inject multiple consciousnesses or multiple souls in, into multiple universes it's no big deal apparently it's an easy thing to get do apparently creation of an, a universe is an easy thing to do and injecting it and injecting part of us into that universe is also an easy thing to do apparently Apparently, I've done it many, many times in my past. Have I? No. Apparently, you've done it many, many times in your past. Lord only knows what I can say about myself. You know, guys, I'm supposed to be some kind of fabrication. Me? Like some kind of appliance? <laughs> Commander laughs about this kind of stuff. But yeah, you know, <laughs> some kind of something. Who knows what the hell I am. Um, <clears throat> uh, it uh, gets injected into this uh, universe. And, uh, and then it's divided up for different roles. There's a physical component that uh, waltzes around and does physical stuff like you are. And there's a consciousness that's, that's associated with that component. And there is the trans-dimensional component of your being, which is still attached to you and connected to you. We call that the guardian angel or the manted, if you're going to use uh, science fiction terms. And uh, there's a Mantid and there's a Mantid Prime. And for the longest time, I couldn't really understand the relationship. That kind of stuff came through, the, all this came from the commander. And uh, it's very easy for me to misunderstand things as well as it is for you all to misunderstand things. So it's... Um, You've got a, a, a part of your trans-dimensional being that's assigned to a pocket universe known as heaven, and you've got a part of your trans-dimensional being assigned to you in the physical world, in, in the reality universe. So really, um, and the way, and I'm, I'm actually using bad terminology. I'm saying there's Mantid and Mantid Primes. As if they're, they're two separate species. They're not. They're containers of your higher selves. They're containers of your trans-dimensional abilities. Both the Manteds and the Manted Primes are part of your soul. I group them together, I do, by functionality. They both are trans-dimensional. They both are part of you. They both have roles. Because the part of us that are trapped here, our consciousness in this reality universe, we can't understand that part of us, the trans-dimensional part. We just can't understand it. Needless to say, um, it should be easy enough to understand if we, if we were permitted access to it. But as it is, it's a part of us that is, because we're in this physical environment, we are uh, not allowed to, or not able to, not allowed, we're, we're not able to understand it. 
for us to understand things, however, we, we, we view things in terms of species. Yeah, I'm consciousness, but I'm in a body. I'm in a physical body. I'm in a human body. And that part of me, or that part of you, is transdimensional, and it is part of another species body, uh, an insectoid kind of thingy, okay? That was germane to this region of space. It blows my mind per... It, it actually blows my mind. How can that possibly be? For me, a physical body, I get it. A consciousness, I get it. A transdimensional aspect, I get it. But transdimensional aspect is part of another species? That I don't kind of get. How can I be two different species at once? Further, how can my other half, my transdimensional part, have two different species that are the same kind kind similar they're not the same but they're similar in functionality and background in two separate universes a pocket universe the the heaven and a reality universe it's kind of funky strange to me to understand but that's kind of the way it works and um <clears throat> i think the tools that i use to visualize this is in itself um problematic because it just adds confusion. But apparently, um, you've got the mantid primes and the mantids, and they are in the transdimensional aspects of them are not entire. They are trapped. The mantids the guardian angels, the, the ones assigned, you, assigned to you, day-to-day -to -day stuff, is here in the physical world, the physical universe in which you are. Imagine that you are this timeless entity. You're floating in a realm that has no time. Time does not exist and is in space that is free of any physical constraints. All you know is you exist. You also know that you have different parts of your being. They represent different aspects of your life and these parts of your being. Here I represent these various parts of your being as colored balls of different colors because it's different quanta. In quantum physics, there's different theories on what these balls look like. The, prevel the prevalent theory has to do with string theory, saying there there are various shapes and forms of string components. But for now, we'll just represent these things as balls. And who you are, the sole entire ter the entirety of who you are, we will call an ISBI, using the terminology from Alien Interview. An ISBI. Everything that is you. And this represents you as an ISBI. ISBIs have the ability to create universes. They can create a physical environment. Here's a universe that the ISBI created. Here's another universe that it created. Here's another universe that it created. And still 
another universe that it created. In this instance, this ISBE created various universes. But it has to occupy those universes. How will it do that? How will it occupy these universes? How? The answer is that it creates a soul. It takes part of what it is into the soul sort of like this and puts the soul in the pocket universe in the universe there's no other way to do it it has to be able to put part of itself in a container we call that container soul to exist in that universe. Let's expand that universe. Instead of using this red plate, let's use something dark, like this. There. Now, doesn't that sort of look like the universe that you know that we're in? Doesn't it look a little bit like it? Maybe it would if it had some galaxies. Perhaps we should draw some galaxies on this. Now we have some galaxies. So we have a soul floating around in this universe filled with galaxies and this soul is in one such galaxy. So now the galaxy is constructed a little bit differently than what you might think. And that's the purpose of this video. We're going to talk about how this soul interacts within this universe. So let's look at the soul right now. The soul needs to create a vehicle while it's in this universe. So there's a physical vehicle that it creates and it puts some of its being in that physical being, physical vehicle. And that's you. This is you. The shot glass is you. Okay? And it's really a dumbed down you. For you to experience the universe, you have to be really simplified. But it doesn't work unless you have all this stuff. If you put all this stuff in here, if you put all this stuff in here, you will fly out of the universe because you will be, look at you, you will be the soul. You would be soul and you would just leave the universe, right? So you can't do that. Can't do that. So you have to be able to have a, a body that you can exist in. It's a dumbed down body. So how does the soul do this? Well, the soul creates another body. We call this a guardian angel or a mantid, depending upon the language that you use. And there's two components to this. And it puts 
some of the more powerful elements in here. And it also puts some very, very special elements here in this, okay? And thus we have this. We have you who are occupying a physical body assigned to a higher component that we refer to as the guardian angel, which is a trans-dimensional being. You're a physical being. Well, actually, your consciousness that's in a physical body. This is a trans-dimensional element of yourself, which we call the guardian angel or a mantad. And it has very powerful components from your soul. And all of you are all the same. You're all one and the same. This is what we're talking about now. Now let's talk a little bit about this guardian angel or mantid component. Here we look at two universes, a red universe and a yellow universe. You can't work or do anything in this yellow universe unless you have your guardian angel, your higher component with you. In this particular universe, it has a series of micro-universes. So the mantid has a part of it. Let's call this the mantid prime that is located in this micro-universe. And for sake of utility, let's call this universe the physical universe or reality universe and this one the heaven universe. And continuing to greatly simplify things, let's say this. After you're done with this body, and you die, you can either go back to soul and join it, or you can go to this other universe where your non-physical state resides, your mantid prime, and you can enter into an existence there. Those of you who have read Alien Interview pretty much understands this, but maybe not as explained in the way that I have done so. I argue that this is not what you want to do. I argue that this is what you want to do. You don't go from the reality universe to the heaven universe. Instead, you locate where soul is and get with soul. But wait, is that true? Is this possible? Well, think about it for a moment. Now you are with your other parts, your other components now. All these other components are now together. Your trans-dimensional components are now with your physical components and all your memories. 
So what's next? This is what's next. Your soul joins up with the rest of the isbi of who you are, and you are whole. And this, I'm going to call it, refer to it as a nightmare of you going from physical to heaven to physical to heaven to physical to heaven ends and that is my elementary interview an introductory segment as to the nature of Isby's soul and consciousness. I can't do things and escape from this environment that is attached to us. Likewise, the Mantid Primes uh, also have its wings clipped and they are stuck as well. <clears throat> now there's all kinds of stuff um, associated with with the Mantid Primes. You may consider them fiction or you may consider it an aid to help you understand things or you may consider it to be um, relevant background information. I really don't know. I really don't know. What I do know is that fundamentally they're a, a trans-dimensional aspect of you and they are in this pocket universe and programmed or actuated or are doing stuff in their mind for your best interests in their mind, just like the regular mantids are trying to do things in a different way in their mind. And you can say that, well, I have said that the old empire has created this pocket universe and set things up so that when the injection of our higher selves, the mantid primes, went into this pocket universe, that they are fixated in a certain way to work with your consciousness and your soul. I'm also under the impression that uh, your soul resides within that pocket universe. So the, um, the Manted Prime have access to the higher functions of the soul aspects of you as an ISBI. So if you can picture a, a universe, the pocket universe, heaven, imagine your soul is in heaven, as is the Mantid Prime. Then in the reality universe is your consciousness as well as a Mantid. This entire system of reality universe and pocket universe all lies outside of the rest of your isbi. Using this to represent an isbi and this to represent quanta, we can now illustrate how you configure bodies within different universes because every universe is different. We have two universes. We have a lime green universe and we have a red universe. To exist in this universe, you have to have a body that fits in this universe. And likewise, a different body in different circumstances that fit in this universe. For illustrative purposes, we will use this handy dandy little device here where on this coordinate is energy level and this is type of quanta. 
for you to optimize this body, you have to take some of your quanta and you have to configure the quanta to certain energy levels. Once the quanta is configured to the proper energy level, it can then fit into the universe. This one has a different set of energy levels for the different quanta. So it's not simply of you just taking the quanta that is associated with your ISBI and putting it within a physical body to operate inside of a universe, but it is adjusting, calibrating, and tweaking the aspects of yourself as an ISBI to fit within those universes. It's like powder, it's like fen, <laughs> you know, it's quanta. And it's really hard for us to grasp our minds about how can we be in multiple places at multiple times? Well, the reality is that we're not talking about our consciousness. We're talking about our being. Our consciousness is a small part of our being. I know it's kind of messed up, but that's kind of the way it works. Hmm? So... Keeping that in mind, ultimately, the Mantid Primes are working on your behalf. While you may disagree with their actions, in their minds, they're working on your behalf. The Mantids are working on your behalf. In their minds, they're helping you on this template that your consciousness is enduring. You, as consciousness, are running through a fated program, a template that was established with the Mantad Primes. And the Mantads are the actua actuators. So if you can imagine this, you can think in terms of the Mantad Primes being the people, or the creature, <laughs> the people, the creatures, or the aspects of you that creates the template that you will live. And the Mantids are the ones that are helping you walk on that template, putting barriers and making sure you're learning lessons and all this other kind of stuff. Now, as an awakened person, whether you're domain or human or trapped uh, person from Tralfamador, <laughs> whatever you may be, you will probably greatly lament the decision that you're on a template right now, fabricated and conceived by the Mantid Primes. But this template that they have issued to you, this pre-birth world line template that they have issued to you is the one where you achieve realization and escape. I'm going to repeat that again. The Mantid Primes generated this template that you're on so that you can escape the reality universe. So how can they really be bad? Why did the Mantid Primes give you this template? 
I know it's got a lot of hardship and all kinds of stuff, but you got to face it. Everything is leading up to a point where you're saying, I've had enough of the reality, I'm leaving out of here. Do you think you would think that way if you had a, a life as a rich oligarch? Do you think you'd feel that way? Do you think you would feel that way if you were hmm, a, uh, an actor who was suddenly given tons of cocaine and lots and lots of sex and said, you're okay, you're going to be, here's a couple of billion dollars and you're going to run the, pretend to run the country while we pull the strings. Would you, would you want to leave? You have to have a certain mix of events to bring you to where you're at right now. And that's the Manted Prime's duty. And because they're trapped in this bubble universe, <clears throat> alongside with the bulk of your soul, and supposedly you should be able to free yourself. But let's just go along with it. Because of that, you can't really get mad at them. You can't say, well, well, actually, you can't say. You can say that uh, their mission is to help generate templates for you to live life. And you can say that. You can argue that. And therefore, you can also say, since the old empire created the heaven pocket universe and modified, genetically modified the beings, both human, you, as well as the manpeds, that they have absolutely affected this environment <clears throat> in a catastrophic, for us, way. <clears throat> so it's all right to have mixed feelings about the Mantead Primes. Apparently, they're transdimensional just like the mantids are transdimensional, but there are different aspects of them. And there's different roles that they have. And both of them want the best thing for you, but they go about it in different ways. <clears throat> and that's how it works, guys. That's exactly how it works. Um, is there anything else you need to know about Mantids? There is nothing that you don't need to know uh, aside from the fact that you are it. It is you. You are in this universe and um, you're going to leave it. The, the issue now becomes the technique, how you leave it. Can you leave it and remove yourself from the cycles? Or do you have to continue enduring? That's up to you. I don't really know the answers, guys. But I'll tell you one thing. I believe in you.